Starting today, mom and dad, the two of us will be living together in this house. Even if you say that so arbitrarily. What about nursing care of your mother? You're doing the housework, so why don't you take care of her? Dad's got bad legs, so don't burden him too much, okay? My husband unilaterally decided to live together with both his parents without consulting me. His mother needs care, and his father is trying to save money, yet he leaves the air conditioning on, leading to stressful days. One day, a significant issue arose between me and his father. When I discussed it with Brian. I'm a 34-year-old part-timer. Currently, in the first year of marriage, living with my husband. We met at the same workplace, started dating immediately, and after three years, we got married. Along with marriage, I switched to part-time work and took charge of the household chores. We both think we don't want kids, preferring to continue renting instead of having our own house. Our thoughts about our future life align in many ways. The first year of our marriage passed without any problems. So, marriage is just wonderful. I'm truly happy. I used to think like that every day. However, around the first year, things started getting cloudy. Hey, did you buy a new golf bag? Oh yeah. Isn't it great? I see. It's not just the bag, I completely upgraded the contents, you know. It was quite expensive, but I work hard regularly. Huh? You bought everything? Bought everything. Golf equipment is quite expensive, isn't it? I don't play golf, so I'm not sure. According to what I heard from a friend, they said golf is something you can't do without some financial flexibility. Surely, you're always working hard, and I don't mind spending on hobbies, but... When it involves significant money, I wish you'd discuss a little. How much was it? Around $1,500, I think. Huh? $1,500, seriously? It got a little expensive, but this is also an initial investment. It's not about that. Why didn't you discuss this with me? It's my money, and it's not like I'm dipping into our living expenses, so it's fine, right? I'm not upset about that. I'm angry at his selfish behavior. Since we're married, it's natural to discuss every action and money with me. Besides, his salary alone is tight. So I'm working a part-time job to cover expenses such as food and electricity. Why can he do such selfish things? Even I want to travel, eat delicious food. I want to indulge. This past year, I hadn't been accumulating dissatisfaction with my husband, but this thing has slowly built up some dissatisfaction within me. And a month passed from that day. That day, there was a problem with the cash register at work, and I ended up being more than an hour late coming back. There were also messages from my husband, and when I hurried back, there were my in-laws. Hi, good to see you. Hi, how have you been? Hey, you. I told you my parents is here, what were you doing until this late? I'm starving, can't stand it. Sorry, had a little trouble at work. You're a homemaker, so hurry up. Even if told to hurry because I'm a homemaker. I had my reasons for being late, it can't be helped. Moreover, he came back without overtime, I wanted a little help with the housework, but... He's just relaxing. I didn't even know his parents were coming, why does he do such selfish things? I was a bit stunned. His parents were also one of the worries. Coming over without permission, even though I had work the next morning. They stay until late just because my husband has the day off. It's not like they're bullying me, and my husband looks forward to his parents' visit, so I don't want to say much. But I'm not completely stress-free. Can you go get some beer? There's only one bottle left. Huh? Right now? Yeah, so? 
It's Friday today, it's fine. It's already 11 p.m. Are you planning to drink until morning? I have work from tomorrow morning. My parents are here, don't say things that'll ruin the atmosphere. Even I was busy with work and house chores since this morning, and today, after over an hour of register trouble, I'm fatigued. I want to go to bed soon because tomorrow will be early again. I have no time for a bath. If I try to sleep, I'm scolded not to spoil the mood. It's truly tiring. Please let me rest a bit at night. I'm different from him who sleeps until noon on days off and goes out to play golf in the afternoon. When we were newly married, I wasn't often irritated by his actions, b. ut lately, I've felt more dissatisfaction than happiness. And so, one day, after almost a year had passed, he came back at noon. There was no notice, and he arrived pale-faced. But as soon as he entered the house, he uttered slowly. My older brother passed away. Huh? Your brother? It was a traffic accident. Upon hearing from her husband about the traffic accident that took the life of my brother-in-law, I was speechless. As he was truly lively and kind, I couldn't believe it at first, but looking at my husband's face, I understood the truth immediately. He truly loved his family, so feeling very down, I worried if he would be able to recover for a while. With that in mind, I had to support my husband, now, more than ever, we have to support each other as a couple. I pledged in my heart and stayed even closer to him than before. What I could do was to ease his burden in any way possible. I was determined to do everything for that purpose. That's how I felt. Later on, I helped with the funeral arrangements, discussed inheritance with a lawyer, and kept doing whatever needed to be done. Three months had passed. Hey, this evening, my mom and dad are coming here. Prepare some food and stuff, okay? Huh? I've got to go somewhere now. Take care of it. After saying that, he went somewhere. He didn't tell me where he was going. His parents were coming. What on earth could this mean? All matters regarding my brother-in-law had been concluded so maybe they were coming for a meal after a long time. I thought and hurried to the store to start preparing dinner. Probably, facing their child's death, his parents must be mentally exhausted. I prepared their favorite food and their preferred alcohol as my husband had informed me. Then around 6.30 that day, my husband returned with his parents. There's quite a bit of luggage. Help me out. Luggage. What's with this much stuff? What do you mean? We're living in this house from today, so I brought a lot of things. There are still some items left at my parents' place, but I plan to move them in tomorrow or something. Huh? Living together in this house from today. What does that mean? I haven't heard anything about this. My husband wore a face as if it were the most natural thing. Carried in the luggage, and there wasn't even a greeting or explanation from his parents. Being unaware of the meaning of the situation, I, alone in confusion, helped to bring the luggage into the house, feeling uncomfortable and confused. Living together from now on. What exactly does that mean? I haven't heard anything about it. We've got spare rooms. It's no big deal. It's not about that. Explain properly. How exactly did this living together arrangement come about? And what about the financial aspects? It's not about the size of our house, like if there are enough rooms to live together. It's not that I dislike his parents, but living together is another matter. I have my privacy too, and if we're going to be living together indefinitely, I need to prepare myself for various things. It might not matter to my husband as they are his real parents, but to me, they're in-laws, complete strangers I've never met before we got married. He should understand this with a little thought. But he seemed as if he hadn't considered me at all. 
Besides, I sensed something odd about my mother-in-law while they were moving in. Usually, she greets me immediately upon seeing me, but today, she completely ignored me. She stared at me with eyes as if I were a complete stranger. What did I do, or maybe, did she feel uncomfortable seeing my face unable to hide my dissatisfaction with their sudden visit? Well, anyway, this is not a situation I can understand without an explanation from my husband. Actually, it seems like mom is suffering from dementia, so dad asked us to live with them. Dementia. Yeah, that's right. So, we're the ones taking care of them. But then, you could have discussed it with me. Whether I discussed it with you or not, the result wouldn't have changed, right? Certainly. I understand what he is saying. But. That doesn't mean it's okay to make such a crucial decision without saying anything. It's something even a young kid would understand. I'm not living alone, so I want my concerns to be considered a bit more. Moreover, if my mother-in-law needs caregiving, there could have been ways like hiring a caregiver. Or perhaps selling the in-law's house and moving closer to ours. I'm not working full-time, but I'm busy every day with housework and a part-time job. Plus, there's only one spare room for one person. I think it's way too cramped for both in-laws. This decision isn't something that should be made so easily. I've been thinking about this for a while, but why is my husband so selfish? Even though he would definitely get angry if I did the same. He thinks he'll be forgiven no matter what he does. The so-called domineering husband. Maybe I just didn't notice, but this might be his true nature. Thinking about it, the future ahead seems troubling. However, they've already moved, so there's no turning back. So, about future financial discussions, are they settled properly? Well, they said they are going to take care of their own money, there shouldn't be any issue, right? Really? My older brother never married, so it seems that they inherited quite a fortune from him. So, it should be completely fine. We didn't have that much financial leeway, so it's helpful that they are covering their living expenses. Well, if they had depended entirely on us, I wouldn't have stayed quiet about it. For now, it became a life with the four of us, and the cohabitation with the in-laws began. However, this cohabitation was by no means a pleasant experience. Hey, I heard you had an argument with dad today? Not an argument. He ordered sushi delivery on his own and asked me to pay. It's not once or twice, and if he orders good food, he should be the one paying. My mother-in-law, even with dementia, had always been quiet and hadn't caused me much trouble. However, the problem was my father-in-law. Even though they said they would cover their living expenses, that wasn't the case at all. I usually refrain from using the air conditioning to reduce utility costs, but my father-in-law keeps the door wide open and the air conditioning on even during the daytime, completely disregarding the utility bills. Moreover, he orders takeout like sushi and pizza and expects me to pay. He makes excuses about not having cash on hand. At first, I tolerated his behavior, but gradually, my stress began to build up. We are providing them with a place to stay, so I want a little respect for my wishes. I'm not asking them to do the household chores or pay the rent. Just handle your own affairs by yourself. That's all. However, despite saying such things, my father-in-law doesn't listen at all, and my husband sides with him rather than me. Can't you pay for that much? I'm paying that from my part-time job money, you know? I haven't even been repaid. Why are you so stingy? Stingy? Who do you think makes it possible for you to eat? You better understand that. What is he saying? Does he want to imply it's all because of him? If he is earning all the rent and living expenses and even providing a maid, then maybe what he said is correct. 
but considering how much I'm contributing. And yet, making such demeaning comments, I'm done. With frustrations piling up due to his selfish words and actions and irritation with my father-in-law, I had already decided. If he doesn't need me and love me, then I'll leave. So, I made up my mind and packed my things. My husband made no effort to stop me from leaving. I thought he'd at least try to stop me a bit, but if he won't, I can leave with a clear conscience. With that in mind, I headed to a small hotel. Then, I asked my high school friend, who is still single, if I could stay with her for a while. It's great to have a reliable friend to depend on at times like these. With such thoughts, after about a week, one day, there was a call from my husband, who had never contacted me until now. Hello. When will you be coming back? Huh? Things are tough here because you're not around. Come back soon. Not a single contact for a week, not even an apology. Truly lacking in basic human decency. Well, I'm not expecting anything from him at this point, and even if he were to apologize, I wouldn't accept it. Why do I have to come back? Because ever since you left, the expenses have become abnormal. Just two days ago, the utility bill came, and it's too high. It's because there's someone who constantly keeps the air conditioning at full blast unlike me. Also, the meals. If you eat out almost every day, of course, it will be expensive. Due to his low income, I was covering our living expenses with my part-time job. That's why I used to go shopping during the supermarket's sale hours, and tried my best to reduce the utility bills. I was cutting back as much as I could. If they thought that even without me, they could continue living as they had before, they were completely wrong. In just a week, it seems they realized how much I had been doing, but it's too late for that realization. They need to understand what they've done to me. Before telling me to come back, isn't there an apology? You're the one who left on your own, so you should be the one apologizing. We've been in a mess ever since you left. You're the one who practically kicked me out, didn't you? Stop making excuses. So, even after saying all that, there's not even an ounce of remorse? If you want me to come back, at the very least, an apology or a display of sincerity is normal. Perhaps it's due to high pride or low intelligence. Well, either way, I didn't have the slightest intention of returning to that house. I thought it was better to leave things as they are, but before that, I decided to tell them something important. I'll send the divorce papers by mail for you to sign, but before that, let me tell you something important. Your parents seem to have absolutely no money. Huh? I don't get what you mean by a divorce. And what do you mean there's no money? It's not that they won't pay for living expenses, it's simply that they can't. Just before I left, we got into an argument because your father ordered sushi without saying anything. Then he told me, he said all the inheritance from your older brother was used to pay off debts. At that moment, my husband fell completely silent. I presume he was utterly shocked and in a state of panic on the other end of the phone. And no wonder. According to my husband, it seems his brother had quite a fortune, and my in-laws misunderstood that they had a substantial inheritance. Not a misunderstanding, actually, they should have inherited a significant fortune immediately after his passing. However, there was something my husband didn't know either. My in-laws had significant debts and were in dire financial straits. They were being supported by his brother and that's the truth. I only recently learned about this story, but I was really surprised when I heard it from my father-in-law. Moreover, that debt was caused by his gambling. I can't trust people who gamble. When I saw how he was making people pay without permission, I thought. But this is the truth. Well, the nursing care expenses will increase from now on, but how are you supposed to live alone? 
I didn't know about that. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I have no obligation to tell you. And what, divorce? I won't accept that. If you won't accept it, I'll have the court accept it. I'm ready to have a lawyer anytime and turn this into a divorce case. As I said that, he fell silent, so I hung up the call. There were multiple calls afterward, but I ignored them all. Since I could hang up the phone and let out all my pent-up feelings, I surprisingly felt relieved. I then told my workplace about quitting my job and moved to the countryside. Fortunately, I found a work-from-home job while living at my best friend's place, and now I'm leading a modest but happy life. After settling into the new place and finding peace in life, I sent the divorce papers to my husband. I also wrote a letter claiming damages for the past occurrences and stated that if he didn't comply with the discussion, I would proceed with the divorce case. Subsequently, he called in anger but eventually agreed to split the damages as he neither had the ability nor the money for a legal battle. The divorce papers were submitted successfully, and we managed to cut off ties. According to mutual acquaintances, my ex-husband ended up quitting his job. That's because after that, his father's health deteriorated, and both his parents needed care. It's obviously impossible for him to manage a job and take care of both parents, so now he seems to be working hard for their care while receiving public assistance. There's notably a significant dispute, especially with his father, regarding his brother inheritance. Nonetheless, as the only son, he feels obligated to take care of my in-laws. So he can't abandon them. It's tough, but I think it's the bed he made and now he must lie in it for the rest of his life. By the way, I'm living a serene life in the quiet countryside. I don't know if I'll remarry in the future, but for now, I'm just hoping to have a slow and peaceful time by myself.